Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where I am excited to be jumping back into the Rio Frontera and Thunder Mesa's bustling riverfront. And the first order of business is completing the 50-foot river steamer, the Canyon Queen. The first time I saw the O-Scale Kitwood Hill Models 50-foot river steamer, I knew I had to build one for Thunder Mesa's Rio Frontera. Though somewhat smaller, the boat bears a strong resemblance to the paddle wheel steamers that once plied the lower Colorado from the Sea of Cortez to the confluence of the Virgin River. I also wanted to dress my boat up a little bit with some design cues taken from Disneyland's Mark Twain with just a little Jungle Cruise flavor thrown in for good measure. Well here is the Kitwood Hills uh, 50 foot river steamer. I, um, I started it a while ago, a year and a half or something like that ago, and for one reason or another I, I set it aside and, and moved on to other projects. But I want you to know it has nothing to do with the quality of the kit. It's a fantastic kit that builds into a beautiful model. And I am excited to uh, finally get back to working on it. And I have to apologize to Simon Cox, who, uh, who created this kit, for taking so long to uh, getting around to finishing it. But now, at last, the time has come. Uh, I'm going to get back to work on this, and I'm going to finish it this week. But before we jump in uh, to the construction on this, let's take a look back at a little slideshow of um, how I got to this point on the model. I started off by building the hull and lower deck according to the instructions but also decided early on to give my boat a fancier multicolored paint scheme with antique white, a hunter green trim, and Tuscan red for the doors, windows, and other accents. I also ran a strip of copper dollhouse tape between the decks to bring electrical power to the lighting I wanted to install. Okay, the next little sub-assembly I want to put together is the actual paddle wheel. And you can see uh, Simon uh, very thoughtfully packs each sub-assembly separately in these little uh, these little baggies. Makes it easier to find and identify the parts. Now each of these uh, these spoke assemblies for the paddle wheel gets a uh, little bushing on each side and then a uh, a bolt ring around the outside of the bushing so it creates this nice layered effect of detail on, on, the, uh, on the spokes. I have to say the fit and finish on these parts is really nice and uh, as someone who's uh, cut plywood on the laser I have to say I'm, I'm impressed with the quality of these, uh, of these cuts. They're, uh, it's really nicely done. Now I'm fitting the spoke assemblies onto the axle and then there's a handy jig that's included to make sure that these are evenly spaced for when we put the paddles on the spokes. Well, putting these uh, paddle boards on is a, is a delicate task. I found it very useful to uh, take a couple of pieces of painter's tape and tape the jig together so it doesn't wobble around while you're doing it. So I gave my uh, paddle wheel a coat of uh, dark brown, flat dark brown, and now I'm going to paint the paddles themselves with some Tuscan red. Now all of the, uh, the bearing pieces and the cranks and the levers, or the connecting rods, they are all also made from laser cut plywood. And I just got done uh, doing a little bit of assembly on those and painting them flat black. And now I can install the paddle wheel on the boat. The first thing is to fit the, uh, the bearings on the ends of the axle. It's a nice tight press fit. This fits right down. There's a couple of slots here. 
Really important to make sure the paddles are facing the right way. <laughs> it would be a real bummer to get this on here and then realize that you got it backwards. I'm going to need tweezers for this one. And this connects to the rod, which comes out of the cabin here. I'll turn it over and do the other side. Now when I do the crank on the other side, it needs to be at a 45 degree angle uh, to this one, just like the quartering on drive wheels on a steam locomotive. Otherwise, what happens? It locks up and it doesn't work. So they have to be quartered by 45 degrees. I mean, this isn't a working mechanism, so it's not critical, but it should look right. To connect the rods to the cranks, I'm deviating from the instructions a little bit. Um, he recommends you use a piece of wire to align the two and cement them together. I would actually like a little bit more of a firm connection, so I'm going to use a dress pin, which is just the right size to fit through this hole. Put a little uh, thick CA on there. Drop it through. Get that set up. Then I'll trim off this end, put it through the hole in the crank, and uh, that'll make a nice solid mechanical joint there. I'll, I'll CA it on both ends. Now I'll go back with some flat black and touch up all that shiny metal. Now I can fit the lids on these piston covers. Now I'm working on the boiler and the stack and the boiler is a is a resin casting and a lot of the fittings are once again laser cut plywood the stack is a piece of uh, brass tubing you use a little thick CA to put that in place We've got this little plywood ring which fits over the top of the brass tubing gives it a nice finished look now I can get some um, some flat black on this. The boiler cradle and the control stand are both made up from uh, pieces of laser cut plywood. I painted those flat black and now I'm just going to dry brush a little gray on here. Just hitting the corners very lightly. Bring out the detail. Okay, I think I can glue that in now. I'll do the same on the boiler itself, bring out a little bit of the cast-in detail. Now, as I understand it, this uh, unit here is equivalent to the steam dome on a locomotive, so I'm going to use some of my gray to make some water stains coming down from that. The alkali has built up. To install the boiler, I'm just going to put some Eileen's on the uh, boiler stand here, on the cradle. But um, I don't want to glue it into place solidly yet. I want it to remain flexible for a minute so I can align it properly. I'm just going to kind of drop it on there. Then I'm going to use the subroof, as Simon recommends in the instructions, to align this perfectly. Okay. Now it's time for some of the brass fittings. This is just some wire that you bend to shape using. Um, Thick uh, cyanoacrylate and for a lot of these joints. Use a little baking soda. Kicks the CA and makes for a stronger joint. It also has the benefit in this case of looking a little bit like alkali buildup around these pipe fittings. All of the uh, the piping, 
and everything for the uh, details for the boiler is kind of integrated with the upper deck roof like the steam pipe runs along the bottom side of the upper deck roof so before I can go any further I need to build the uh, upper deck at least the base of the upper deck so I'm going to uh, cut all these support pieces out and glue them into place well it's time for me to deviate from the instructions a little bit I've created a new steam line uh, with some phosphor bronze wire. I've added a, a little uh, control wheel uh, with a part from my scrap box. And now I am wrapping the steam line. And this is a white artist tape. And I'm using it to simulate the insulated wrapping that you often see on steam lines like this. Cut a scale foot wide strip and I'm just wrapping it on. And I have a, a three millimeter yellow LED, which I'm going to attempt now to solder to the uh, power bus that I have coming up from below the deck. This is what I planned for. I've tinned both the bus and the LED leads. So in theory, a little flux on there, I should just need to touch them with a hot soldering iron and uh, Get a connection. We'll see how that goes. Success! Since I don't want light leaks around the edge of the roof here or the deck, I made a little. Uh, interior ceiling just drops down in there like that that should keep all the light inside the cabin where it belongs now i think i can glue <laughs> the roof into place the trick is getting each of these poles down into each of these holes and getting everything to line up perfectly for the uh, steam pipe hangers, rather than use the stock pieces, I fashioned some new ones out of music wire. I drilled some holes, and those come up through the holes, and uh, just uh, CA'd them into place there. And I'll trim them off flush with the, uh, with the top of the roof. Now I need to run this uh, dollhouse... Uh, conductive tape all the way from the stern up to where the wheelhouse is going to be. And the idea is that it will be uh, hidden between the upper and lower parts of the upper deck. Then I'll be able to rip the backing off of this and put the top deck on. Now just like the lower deck, the upper deck is some um, 16th of an inch thick basswood that's been laser etched and got some nice uh, nail holes in there or uh, peg holes. And just like I did with the lower deck, I, uh, I stained it with my uh, alcohol and India ink stain. And then I like to go back with some watercolors, mixing up some burnt sienna and cobalt blue. I'll just show you real quick here. So I just go through and pick out individual boards and uh, till I like the way it looks. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more of the burnt sienna, sometimes a little bit more of the cobalt blue, sometimes weaker, sometimes stronger, just to give it some variation. Since this top deck is already warping a little bit. 
I don't want to use any more water soluble products on it. I don't want to put more uh, like uh, wood glue or anything. So I'm using some Super 77 spray contact adhesive. Pull this off. And that. You can never have too many clamps. Well, that went about as well as can be expected. Now I can glue the uh, upper deck trim on. Now I've got four tiny little brackets go on here for the stack stays. Let's glue those into place. Once again these are made from laser cut uh, plywood. I've already uh, assembled the stays. They come in two parts. There's a laser etched outline on the deck too that shows you exactly where to glue them into place, which is a handy detail. Well, surprise, surprise, once again I am deviating from the instructions, uh, this time both in method and materials used. This is this ring that goes over the stack and the pipe uh, for the whistle, and the kit provides you with uh, several pieces of wire to act as stays. And um, it's quite the balancing act to try and get this on here with these wires in exactly the right position. So um, I'm replacing the wires with some black thread, which I think will look more like cable uh, when all is said and done. And now I'm going to slide this over the top and just position it and glue it into place. And then I can thread the uh, cables uh, through the stays down here and glue them into place with a little CA. a cap for the stack out of stacked rings and fit that on here. Okay. I'm making a slot in this uh, piece of wire for the whistle handle. It's actually all the parts you need for the whistle right here. And it gets a tiny little ring. Goes over the top of that. Last but not least, this little brass tube which acts as the whistle itself. All right, now we can turn this thing around and finish up the stern. The first order of business is these uh, stern posts, which will hold the stays in place. 
They just fit into these little slots back here. I'm going to put the stay braces on and go from up here on the top deck down here to the stern. Uh, there are a couple of little uh, little bracket that holds them into place, but and the instructions tell you to put that on first. I think it's going to be easier to put these on first and then build the bracket around it. This goes down into the hole. This goes into the bracket. And this ends up at the stern. If my stays are the right length. Looks like I got that pretty close. There we go. Just like that. I've got the bracket on here. I've got one side of it on. And I'm going to use a steel dress pin to lock it all together. And just slide this onto the other side. install these stern boards. I painted the mast uh, antique white to match the cabin. Go ahead and install that now. Just like so. And as an extra fancy touch, I give it a brass finial up on top. Well, up until now, I've uh, pretty much been just uh, following the directions on the, I mean, I go off on my own here and there, but uh, pretty much follow, just following the instructions on the kit. Uh, but now I really want to start personalizing it and making my own. I've already done a little bit with the paint uh, here, uh, but I've made some laser cut parts. Um, I've got some gingerbread trim for around the top. This is uh, based on the pattern that's on the Mark Twain at Disneyland. Appropriate, I think, for the Thunder Mesa layout. And then I've got, uh, first thing I want to do right now is uh, create a crown for the top of the stack, you know, one of those uh, really cool Victorian looking crowns that these steamships had in their heyday. So I've uh, laser cut some out of some uh, one thou laser board. Got three different sizes here. Hopefully one of them will fit. So that's the next thing I want to make. I've also got some corbels and uh, things for the post to dress up the deck. So right now I'm going to build this crown and we'll see how that turns out. Well the first thing I've done is I've gone and scored little lines uh, next to each one of the uprights of the crown so I can uh, fold it into a circle. Put some glue on this one. If I overlap it with this next one, that should give me the shape I want. I'm going to put a little ring of Bristol board around the outside here. I find it's very helpful to uh, hold this with a piece of quarter inch dowel so I don't crush the rounded shape. And now I want to go around and bend each one of these upright pieces outward. Now to get it to hold that shape, I'm going to slather the whole thing with some, uh, some CA. And uh, that'll harden the laser board and hopefully keep it all in this shape. Well, that actually worked. It's uh, made it nice and stiff, much stronger. And now I'm going to get a coat of flat black on there. 
I can install it. It should just fit right over this ring if I did everything right. I really set the whole thing off. Got a thin strip of brass. I'm going to put it around the base of the crown here. <laughs> I dig it. Now I'm going to add some trim around this top deck with some uh, scale one by six. This, this is not material that comes with the kit. It doesn't have any trim for up here. It's 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 um it's more of a working class boat <laughs> than what I want for Thunder Mesa. So. I am uh, tarting it up a bit. Now I can start putting on some of this laser cut gingerbread and I'm going to start with this uh, rather elaborate stern piece. The design is based on the uh, what's on top of the pilot house of the Mark Twain at Disneyland. Decided I also want a uh, a flagpole back on the stern here. Um, so I'm using this fancy toothpick, which is about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter. So I used a smaller drill bit to uh, start this hole. And now I'm just using a sixteenth inch bit, which you can do just like a twist drill. Now we got a place for old glory. Well, I just got finished uh, <laughs> painting all of these posts white, which of course in retrospect would have been much easier to do before they were installed, but hey, you know, we all make mistakes. But uh, now I can start installing these laser cut corbels at the top of each one of the posts. Add a little bit more Victorian detail to this thing. Well, once again, I'm deviating from the instructions and some of the materials in the kit um, for the uh, mast stays I'm substituting black thread once again like I did on the stack for the wire that comes in the kit. Uh, it's easier to work with and has a better scale appearance in my opinion. Looks more like cable. I also um, changed the route of this of these rear stays. Um, in the instructions he has them going outside the upper deck and down into the lower deck here, kind of a bend right in the middle. Um, I decided it would look better because of the fancy gingerbread I put on here to have those uh, stays end up here on the roof. So I uh, used a couple of the spare cleats that are included in the kit to make uh, tie downs up here on the roof for these. have started work on the pilot house and the first order of business was to solder a couple of leads off of this uh, dollhouse tape that runs the length of the upper deck and brings the power up from below. Uh, got that done and I've already built the uh, wheel stand, the ship's wheel. Just followed the instructions on that. I've already got a coat of uh, gray primer on the wheelhouse parts um, and 
For the green trim, I've already got that painted so it'll all match the rear cabin. So now I need to paint these with my antique white. Well, I've got all the parts laid out here for the pilot house. Got the uh, walls painted and the trim pieces painted. It's going together uh, pretty pretty easily um, according to the instructions. The only thing really slowing it down is um, the fancy paint job that I insist on putting on everything. So right now I'm uh, assembling the windows and they've got a peel and stick backing which makes that pretty easy. Just Peel that off of there, and then line it up with the glazing, and press it down. Um, once again, I painted all the window frames and the doors Tuscan red. The uh, trim is a hunter green, and of course the main body of the ship is uh, that uh, antique white. So I'm going to finish uh, putting these windows together, get those installed in the walls on the flat, and then put the whole thing together and figure out how I'm going to run the wires for the lighting uh, up uh, through the uh, through the cabin. I'm going to have two uh, LED lights, one to light the interior of the pilot house and another one for a box headlight that I want to have out front, which is not part of the kit, but something I wanted to add. times these old steamships had big box headlights very similar to what you'd see on old steam locomotives from the same period so I have this one from my scrap box it's a it's a brass detail part that I've painted flat black and now I'm going to put an LED inside of it conveniently and has a hole in the bottom and this is one of those uh, little flat LEDs I'm sorry I don't know the technical name of what these are called but it's a warm white LED I'm going to use some CA, some thick CA, to uh, mount it inside here. Now I've fashioned a lens from a little disc of uh, clear acetate, fogged it a little bit with some sandpaper, and uh, CA it into place. Conveniently, the pilot house has a little shelf here on the front, presumably for a headlight, so I was able to um, run the wires down through that. And now we'll see if it works. It's got a little three volt battery here. I think that'll do it. Well, this is a bit of a puzzle, figuring out how to light this thing and uh, hide all the wires. I just had to solder a uh, 510 ohm resistor on the positive lead from the light from the headlight so that this will work with the uh, layout's nine volt system. Whoa. And, um, that was a that was a delicate bit of surgery and now i have to run the wires up into along the bottom and then up inside of the pilot house well i decided it would be somewhat easier to finish up the wiring with the pilot house in place so i've gone ahead and installed it in its little slot here at the front of the, the bow of the boat now i can bring the wiring in from uh, that's hidden below this deck and uh, finish uh, wiring all the lights up. Uh, the wires run up through, I made sort of a closet, a little cabinet out of uh, some illustration board and then they, uh, <laughs> then they coil around up there under the roof where they can't be seen through the windows. And I've also added a figure, a little guy in there. He's actually a, a, a European railway conductor, but I thought he looked like a riverboat pilot, so I promoted him. And now I am ready to put the lid on this. While all of that has been going on with the lighting, I've also been working on the roof off and on. I added some, some 1x4 as trim around the edge, and I'm uh, swapping out the... Uh, 
the trim that came in the kit for some of my laser cut Victorian gingerbread that uh, that I put on here so it'll match the rest of the boat. I've added some extra bracing along the roof line here. It'll uh, also to help prevent uh, light leaks from the LED in there. I'm also uh, substituting some brass wire for the handrails here for the uh, music wire that comes in the kit just to give it a little bit of fancier look. the pole for the whistle. The kit doesn't come with a ship's bell, but I have one, which is an old Grantline uh, bell for a porter. And I think I'm gonna use that. Already drilled a little hole. Okay. I can install the tow posts, capstan, and then we put in the various chocks and blocks and cleats here. installation of the rudders I have reached the end of the instructions but not the end of the build you may have already noticed that I have some laser cut balustrade here and um, these are each one of these panels uh, gets built out with uh, one by twos on each side to give it a little thickness to create the rail and then a uh, piece of one by four on the top which is stained with some early American for a nice handrail to finish it off and they're sized to fit between these upright posts and there's going to be one two on the front on each side and then one on the back on each side and then this central area will be open for loading and unloading the boat. I'll probably have a rope across there. Now to position these properly I want them about six inches above the deck. I have a little six by twelve block here to elevate it and hold it in place while the glue sets up. It's not bad. And when the glue sets up, just push this through and grab it on the other side. Now go ahead and finish the rest of these railings. Now in between the balustrade, I'm going to add a little rope just on this side. Over on the uh, starboard side, I'm going to leave that open so that I can uh, come back and detail the deck later on. Well, every boat needs a name, and I have decided that uh, this old girl will be known as the Canyon Queen. So I created a, a signboard. This is some laser cut uh, 25 uh, thou laser board uh, with a printed sign. I created up uh, created that in Photoshop. I made everything to match up and line up. It's double sided. It's got some uh, brass uh, um, wire to hold it up. I wanted to have an arch sign. It's kind of a nod to the Jungle Cruise, you know? And that goes in there. There she is. Queen of the River. 
I also went ahead and uh, created a sign for the rear for the stern here. Very traditional. And uh, one thing we need on here, the stern flagpole, is an American flag. Also made in Photoshop. This is a historic American flag with 36 stars. And of course, in a, a nautical tradition and maritime law, the flag of registry should fly from the stern. Using some thick CA here. Give old glorious Brits. Now, usually the uh, the company colors are flown from the main mast, so I've created a banner pennant for the Western River Expedition Company. And with that, I do believe she's done. And there she is, the Canyon Queen, right at home on the Rio Frontera. That's her future spot once the river is poured and all that detailing is done. I still need to go back and uh, add a few more details to the boat. She still needs some freight on the deck and maybe some passengers and a little bit more of this and that, but uh, I think it's time to wrap this one up. But before we go, let's see what she looks like in night mode. And that is going to do it for this one, my friends. Thank you so much for watching that entire video. I hope you enjoyed the build, and I hope you will tune in again next time when I do some more work here on the Rio Frontera or maybe Calico Mountain or one of the other projects I got going on here at Thunder Mesa Studio. You never know what I'll get into. Until then, keep moving forward. Adios for now. <laughs>